Hey everybody, Sean here with Revealing Truth, where we expose the errors of false teachers and reveal the truth of what scripture really says. Now, it would seem that Sadhu makes up story after story. Please, if you are a follower of this man, don't just focus on the good he says because all false teachers say many good things. But look at the things he says and test them by scripture. Remember that true prophets of God never had one prophecy that did not come true. Sadhu has many. And today we're going to hear many more fairy tales coming from his mouth. I preached at a pastor's conference. And the Lord Jesus cried with tears running down his eyes. So we start off with yet another face-to-face -face with Jesus crying and talking to Sadhu. Do you really think that a false prophet is seeing Jesus at all? Never mind how often Sadhu meets with him. He may be meeting face-to-face -face with someone, perhaps a fallen angel that is lying. Remember, angels are beautiful and they are out to deceive. And he told me, said, tell the pastors, give my church back to me. That's what he said. Give my church back to me. I want my church back. You are, run, you are running my church like how you like. Give it back to me. Give my bride back to me. That was the earnest, tear-filled plea of the Lord Jesus. Give my church back to me. You know, this is something God is going to do in these last days. You read this in Matthew chapter 21. When he entered into Jerusalem, the first thing that he did, before any preaching, before any signs and wonders, he made a whip and he whipped out every false apostle, every false prophet, every false teacher, every false pastor, every false evangelist, out of the temple. Everyone! who was building his own empire were kicked out of the temple. So here we have another twisted story about Jesus. Yes, there is one time that Jesus made a whip and it was when the money changers were using the holy temple of God as a market square to make monies and Jesus said it was a house of prayer. Yet, Sadhu starts off saying God is going to do this in the last days. Well, no, Jesus is not going to be walking around with a whip. God is storing up his wrath that will come down on unbelievers at the end of the age. Right now, Satan has been given authority to run this world the way he wants, and God is allowing it. Second, he says that before Jesus did any preaching or any signs and wonders, he made a whip. Now, making a whip had nothing to do with the chronological order of what he was going to do. It was simply because they were disgracing the temple. Number three, he says that he drove out every false teacher, every false prophet, every false apostle, every false evangelist, and every false pastor. But once again, this verse has nothing to do with false teachers or teaching. It's about money changers. Next, he says, after this, Jesus preached, taught, and healed them all. But if we look at scripture, it only talks about him healing them all. So I just want to point out that this is exactly what false teachers do. They use proper scripture, but then add things in that aren't there. They twist the meanings and make it suit their own teaching and agenda. When all these old pretentious clergy, workers of God, were kicked out, then the Bible says, the lame, the blind, the deaf, and the dumb, they all came into the temple. And the Lord Jesus Christ preached, taught, and healed them all. This is going to be repeated again in these last days. So, those pastors, those leaders who want to be the boss, will be kicked out. And God will raise up new leadership. No, God is not cleaning house of all the false teachers like Bill Johnson, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, and the others that are building up their own empires. He's not replacing them with good teachers. He's allowing this to happen, and as the Bible says, things will get worse and worse, and there's going to be a great falling away, not a restoration of good teachers. This next new leadership will be the faceless, the nameless, and the selfless. It's the nobodies. 
the children, the youth, the old men, the old women, they will rise up and do great exploits for God in these last days. So, which means, children, youths, old men, old women, ordinary folks, they are all you. I mean, you are going to be the superstars in the last days. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. And that's exactly what he's doing. Upon you, God will pour out the powers of the age to come and use you mightily like never before history has ever witnessed. That is why you must get ready. But remember one thing. When God pours out his glory upon you, don't make the mistakes of your forefathers. Don't make the mistakes. Don't take money for the anointing of God. Don't take a fee for preaching. Those are all the mistakes your forefathers have done. So once again, he's mixing things up. We can only assume that he's referring back to the story he just told because he wasn't talking about the forefathers charging money for preaching, but he was talking about the money changers. And he's confusing it with false teachers and false pastors. This guy is very clever to use scripture, but twist it up in a way to come up with a seemingly biblical message. But it's his message. It's not what the Bible says. Don't go on the airwaves and ask for a huge sum of millions of dollars to buy a plane when you already have so many planes in your hangar. And now allowing humor on a bit of truth to keep the crowd going. Don't do all that. You don't need that because God is going to transport you from place to place. Amen. Amen. He's going to supernaturally transport you place to place. You know, last week I was in Nigeria and I met a bunch of university students who have this supernatural transportation like it's in every common nature to them. These are just university students. They are transported geographically all over Africa and to even other nations in the world to preach and to pray for people. As soon as they finish their work, they are transported back to their hometown. So apparently, God is transporting people like in Star Trek around the world for preaching. This guy is just making up stories, yet nobody seems to have the least bit of concern about such a big claim. If this was true, we would definitely be hearing about it from more people than just Sadhu. My friends, I may be wrong, but I'm pretty confident in saying that God is not transporting people around the planet on a regular basis. But now he's going to turn this into a big joke to keep the crowd's attention. And these kids, I saw them, you know, they have no ass about them. They don't even think about that at all. They couldn't, they, they don't focus on that. They they think it's just an ordinary job that I'm doing. See, that is the attitude you should have. Nameless, faceless, selfless. If God gave this kind of anointing to those kind of preachers who want an airplane, you know what they will do the next minute? Cameraman! Come here, quickly. Come on. Bring the camera. Quickly. Tell me, sister. Come here, sister. Come here. Come on, come on, get up. Come on, get up. Camera, tell to the camera, tell to the world, where did you go? Europe. Ah, uh, Europe, oh, Europe, which place in Europe? Uh, Paris. Paris, oh, Paris, look at this, Paris, oh, Paris, hallelujah, hallelujah, Paris, what did you do there? Come on, come closer. Had dinner. Dinner, wow, wow, come on, everybody, say hallelujah, 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 how many of you had this experience? Come on, put up your hand. Okay, for a thousand dollars. 
for a thousand dollars. How many thousand dollars? Come on. Let's sit down. <laughs> Poor woman, she's lost. Oh, I'm, I'm just enacting a drama. You have seen all these clowning acts, right? People of God, you must not make that mistake. And he's right. There shouldn't be a big show like we see in so many churches today, like Hillsong. But this just takes the focus off his lie about people being teleported and onto an actual truth. Those with eyes and ears can discern the truth from the lie. I pray that God would open all your eyes that see this man as a special anointed prophet of God, because I assure you, he is not. So that's it for today, but remember, if you did find this information helpful, please like and share the video and get this information out to those who are deceived. And until next time, take care and God bless.